All right, we're here with Mitch Hedberg, and he's going to be at the Tempe Improv this weekend. And uh, thanks for stopping by. And uh, we know you're pretty busy. And I've seen your act. Actually, the day that they asked me if I wanted to do the interview with you, I saw you on Comedy Central Presents. Oh, yeah. And I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Thanks. And your delivery is completely different than anybody else I've ever seen. Uh, you just you don't, like, do the whole setup of, you know, so I was walking down the street or whatever. You just, like, blurt stuff out. Uh, where does that come from? Uh, that just comes from, uh, you know, years of uh, trying to tell jokes and just uh, settling on a certain thing. I guess it's just whatever feels comfortable. I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not a storyteller in real life, uh -huh. so uh, I don't see the need to string my jokes in a story-like fashion. I just figure one thought, when it's over, I just go to the next thought. Yeah, and I, I was checking out your website today, and, it, and uh, I saw that you're going to have a comedy CD that's going to be coming out pretty soon here. And uh, do you have an update of, like, the exact date at all or well I tell you what man I'm gonna lose a lot of money on this CD because it's uh, gonna be in stores and uh, right the profit uh, margin for CDs when you sell them yourself is amazing you know it costs about a buck fifty to make a CD and you can sell it for like 15 bucks you know <laughs> but now I'm gonna make probably a dollar a CD at the most so I'm a little sad about it. I really don't want to talk about it because it's, okay. it's making me sad but I would say by by spring Okay. It should be in the stores uh, on Comedy Central Records. I guess they have a new label now. Well, I have a burner if you want to just burn them and we could well, <laughs> sell it for like 15 bucks. I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they won't even cost a buck fifty then. Sure. You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I feel bad even saying that, but I'll tell you this: when I play college shows, I sell them for ten bucks because okay. I know college uh, people. You know, they, they're, they're not exactly always loaded, so I just want to know. I, I drop it from fifteen to ten. Yeah. I did it right here at Washington University. <laughs> and. Uh, and what is it like to be in Arizona? Where are you from, first of all? Minnesota, and I, I think there's a lot of Minnesotans in Arizona. But uh, I love it here, you know, especially now. This is amazing. I, I would, uh, I'd live here if, uh, if the entertainment industry was, uh, was a little closer, you know. I, I, I dig it here. You know, I like sun, man. I mean, I, I'm way into it. So uh, this, this place makes me happy. Yeah, and uh, you also got your chance to be in the entertainment industry a little bit more. Uh, besides just doing the stand-up, you also did some movies. You did like Almost Famous and stuff. What was that like to do that? Well, it was great because I, I most of the auditions I do, I blow. And uh, this this <laughs> particular one, I got a callback. And when I when I did the callback, I got to uh, audition in front of Cameron Crowe, and he's a pro, you know. And, and he put me in his movie, gave me a couple lines. In the end, I, I'm, my scene is very small, and, and I'm embarrassed that it's a credit now because when people go see the movie, they hardly see me. But when I filmed the movie, I did a lot more than you see in the movie, so it was a great experience. Man. Yeah. And then TV, of course, uh, that was, you know, I'm glad I got just a couple spots on the sitcoms because it kind of showed me what it's all about and, and gave me some time. You know, you got to have a couple of things where you can burn your bad performances, you know what I mean? Right. Because it takes a while for me to uh, get comfortable in new situations. Like, I had like five cable uh, comedy shows that I did before I got on Letterman, and that was good because those five ones sucked. Yeah. And by the time I got to Letterman, I was a little bit more prepared. So it's good to have... Uh, you know, chances to burn the bad performances. Yeah, and Letterman loves you. You've been on there like seven times, right? Nine. Nine times. Sorry. And uh, and so uh, he really likes you a lot. What is that? What's that like when you go there and get to do that show? Well, you know, he, I think he does like me, but I, you know, he's very very aloof. He doesn't hang right. out uh, or talk to the talent. Uh, but doing the show is great because uh, everyone there is nice to me too. Not, you know. Uh, they're just they're just cool and the makeup ladies are they uh, they know my jokes and they, they they'll say them back and and uh only thing that sucks is comedians get bumped a lot on that show and and, right. and but you know it just turns out to be a free vacation in new york actually a paid vacation in new york so <laughs> it doesn't bother me it's a great thing to do yeah that's cool and uh so what kind of stuff do you do you've been touring for like three months now right or maybe longer i don't know yeah well i've been on the road uh this particular stand i've, I've been doing all of january and then before that i was on a four month non-stop tour and uh, it's just great, man. I mean, I mean, hotel life is cool because there's no mail. You know, mail can depress you. Yeah. <laughs> How's that sound coming? Is it coming in, man? And the mail, and the mail. <laughs> there's so much noise out here. The mail, the mail is just. I just love not getting mail, and I love having my bed made by a, by a nice woman. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so is that hard though, not spending time at you know your house, which you're paying for anyways? And yeah, it is hard, but that's why I'm glad I own a house because it used to be I'd be on the road and I'd be renting. And that would just be purely throwing money away. I mean, I wouldn't be there for a full month and I'd have to pay rent. But now at least, you know, I pay for a month and it's a mortgage and I own it. So it's a better situation. Own own before you rent when you're on the road. 
And is there like something that you, whenever you're touring at some city, you say, I got to be sure I do this? Uh, yeah, I got to, uh, <laughs> that's a good question, man. I, I got to be sure I get out of the hotel room. That's what I got. Because I tend to spend a lot of time in there just uh, hanging out and sleeping, man. It, 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 it kind of becomes a, a, a habit, you know. I, I got to get outside. That's what I got to do. Yeah. And I also, you're like this big entrepreneur now. You got the CD coming out. And then I also saw on your website that you have incense that you sell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's the thing. It's kind of sketchy to sell stuff that's based on a joke in your act. You don't want people to think you're corny or, or you know, you want, you know, to have integrity. But on the other hand, you know, if, if, the, if the product's relatively cool, it was my webmaster's idea to make incense, and I went with it. It's always been a very uh, give and take thing with me to sell stuff, you know, T-shirts or whatever. Right. But for the most part, as long as it's promoting you, you know, you can't go wrong. You got to promote yourself a little bit, you know. Yeah. But I've always been a little wishy-washy on selling stuff. I hope people don't think it's corny, man, because if they do, I'll, I'll take that stuff right off. And uh, also, speaking of the entertainment industries type stuff, you have written some scripts. And have you gotten to actually, like, show any people these things, you know, that you want to do or not yet? Well, I wrote a movie uh, script, Los Enchiladas, and it played. At, we filmed it, I paid for it, and it played at Sundance. So that was a, a good cool. thing. And, and But uh, other than that, the scripts that I turned in, you know, until something is uh, officially accepted, most people will say it's not good, you know what right. I mean? So it's really hard to get people on board on something that you write. So that's why a lot of times you gotta take the, uh, you gotta take the work on yourself and, and try to get it made yourself, you know, because until someone gets behind something, no one else gets behind it. And then once one person gets behind it, everyone's behind it. So it's, it's a hard thing, man, it's hard. I've written some stuff that I thought was hilarious, but I turned it in. And a lot of times these people won't even read it. They'll turn it over to their assistant to read it. And their assistant is, you know, not who I'm trying to impress, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so it's a hard thing, man. It's really hard. But that's why writing jokes is great. For, it's immediate payoff. Yeah. I get to get the immediate reaction. I know if it's good. And I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm my own boss, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, like, I, most comedians, I can ask them, you know, like, so what do you think about this? Because I know that they do something about it in their routine. You, it's kind of just, like, random stuff. So what's like some crazy stuff, something, some, something that made you laugh over the past week or something like that? Uh, you know, you ain't gonna believe this, but uh, that Chris Kattan movie, uh, um, <laughs> Courtney, uh, Cor what's Cor it called? Cor Cor Corky Romano, Romano man. Yeah. You know what, man? I saw it the first time, I hated it. You know, this is another <laughs> bad movie. But then I saw it again and I laughed my, my head off at these, uh, at these slapstick <laughs> you moments. You say ass if you want. My ass off, <laughs> yeah, because you know I wasn't going for head there. <laughs> but I was laughing my ass off at his uh, slapstick, man. And sometimes, every now and then, a, a really physical comedian will make me laugh hard if I, if I give it a second chance, you know? Yeah. My first impression is, ah, that's just some physical comedy. But after, man, I said, man, that's funny, man. <laughs> I was laughing hard at Cor Corky Romano. <laughs> And is there anything that, like, once you got to Arizona, you're like, that is just completely weird. I don't understand that. Once I got here? Yeah. Let me see. Um, yeah, I'm sure there is. You know, uh, my hotel has a coffee shop that never opens. <laughs> so <laughs> that, I thought that was weird. You know? Yeah. When I got out for morning radio, I said, I'm going to get a coffee. And I went down there. It was closed. <laughs> It'll probably open at 10 p.m., you know? Right. Start serving coffee at 10. And, uh, yeah, well, thanks so much for coming here. We really oh, thanks, appreciate man. it. I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks. I hope the yeah. ambient sound didn't ruin it. No. I